So what is it, 90 degrees? Warm weather never used to bother me in Alaska. In 95, I had a 106 degree day. I remember welding when I was down in Washington when I was still a kid, welding on my 68 Camaro because it had some rust problems. But uh, yeah, I'm not so tough with the heat anymore. Anyway, Bert just got here. I had this over in the lathe. The big thing that I was wanting to tell people about is when you're working on an axle, this one here, we put a new piece on the stub. It is, uh, it's got a weld in here. All of this end is new. I'm just about to put the key cutout in it here. You put a keyway in that part of a lock washer goes into is what that's about on the end. But the big thing that people, in tell you the first couple of times you work with these, if you don't know this, it'll really, really mess with you or mess with your head. You don't dial it in here and dial it in at the other end. These are not straight. Once in a while, there will be one that's straight, but the majority of them are made with a little bit of an offset. This axle, it's straight from bearing to bearing and should be straight to the seal, maybe fairly straight to the uh, mounting for the brakes, which is here. But in relation to the opposite side, it will be slightly off in towards center so that when the wheel weight is on all of this bearing here, it comes back to approximately straight because they don't figure on this really staying as a rigid piece. If it were a off-road super mudder and we were building one with rock tires going to jump over cars and smash them, we'd make it straight and we'd make it super strong and it wouldn't bend. It would just smash cars. But in the real world, trying to save weight, still haul a lot, they put a little bit of bend in these. The amount varies from axle to axle. And, uh, but a, a common amount is about, if you had it straight on both sides, the middle bent about an eighth of an inch to maybe a quarter inch is what you would have in the middle. And when I used to do a lot of these years ago for the trailer axles, I'd, I'd fixed a lot of them years ago. And what we would normally do is make the axle straight to begin with so we could get so we weren't towing in towing out we'd make it straight on a pair of uh, v blocks and then we'd go ahead and go dead in the middle we had a big uh, 200 ton press with a 10 foot plate on it that we could position things pretty good and then we'd set it equal and put a consistent bend in the middle and I'd done enough of them to where I remembered at that time what the numbers were. I think the biggest bend they had in any of them was three-eighths of an inch in the middle, which is quite a bit, but some of them are kind of springy. Anyway, the trick is when you're dialing in on the lathe, and we'll walk over to the lathe here for a second too. When you dial it in on the lathe, of course, this part here is ruined most of the time. That's usually what you're fixing. And so you, you can dial in here, or in this case, I had this on the steady rest, and I dialed in here on the steel surface, which was slightly elliptical. And I also dialed in here, and I kind of compromised between the two elliptical components because uh, th they weren't perfect. This one here, the seal actually rotates within itself for a seal. So this is not critical to be round, but you still want it running in the same position approximately where, as where it should be. And so I had uh, three thousandths off here, and I think I was five thousandths off here. But um, it wasn't going to get any better than that. What you don't want is you don't want it, you know, dead on here and twenty thousandths off here. You, you, sometimes the brakes are a little bit more floating. They can give a little bit more. You want the seal close. Um, also, this is a really close uh, distance here. A small amount of difference makes a big amount out here. Now, another thing is over here on the lathe, it's just handy when you're doing these. Um, and also that, that tube, I guess we should go back there for a second. The tube, when I do these, I don't just take a piece of tubing and weld it on. And that's, that's why the steady rest instead of just, uh, I take, uh, sometimes it'll be a solid piece here. I'll go on a steady rest and actually drill this out. And I'll do an undercut on the piece that I'm welding on. This time it was thick wall tubing. So I had a little bit to bore out, but I had most of the middle already gone. But I make the portion here 
smaller and then it goes inside of the rest of the tube so that you know you've got a full penetration weld all the way down inside where you're welding it and then uh, then there's no no problem with strength you're just cleaning up the middle again so that the axle will fit correctly you put that on your steady rest you do your inside work you could do it either way but normally you do your inside work first and then when I do the inside work, I was uh, boring it out. And after I bored it out, I did just a little bit of turning on the outside so that where I was at was the place I could dial in with a uh, four jaw tailstock chuck, which you people should have seen before I put this in. And the reason I didn't do more turning, uh, someone had came by and asked me, well, why don't you just turn it all? since it's already setting in the steady rest, just turn it all on the outside. You can if you have to, but there's a couple problems with that. One is the surface that you're using your steady rest on, whether it's a slider pads or whether it's rollers, you're putting a little bit of potential damage on that surface. The less that you run on a surface you want to maintain on an axle, the better off you are. And two, which is really a big thing on these ones with the rollers, and these are good rollers, but you're turning chips as you get closer into your steady rest, you have a possibility of feeding a chip through this. And a chip coming through this roller style, really, it imprints into the axle, it hurts the rollers, it's just, it really causes damage. With the ones where you have just a bronze slider here with oil on it, the chip will usually come off the side and it's not as much of a problem, but once in a while it will stick also. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out here that you don't think of at first, but you're working with your steady rest, you did your axle inside, you got ready to set it up for the outside. Of course, you leave it on the steady rest while you're moving that over just because of logistics. Then after you've got it on, the four jaw chuck or i wouldn't use a three jaw you need to set up some rotating four jaws it's really worth it guys anyway after you do that then you back off your jaws on your steady rest your your rollers your posts and you slide it back so now when it's slid back it's out of your way but it's still there so then when we get all done what you do is you run these out and it doesn't have to hit on anything round it can hit on which it did just the the rectangular of the tubing we'll go over that in a second but what that does is it lets you have your axle you get everything off of it you can have your axle just setting here and you loosen two jaws up on your main chuck and then you're ready to pick it up with your crane nice and easy instead of having it uh, where you can bang stuff real easy. If you're messing with the end uh, with a chuck there, you can easily bang things and have to redress your threads because of uh, something that went wrong. So on this one here, which it was turning, setting up in a different direction, but that steady rest, I just brought it up so that it was setting on two of these square pieces here. Of course, you can't rotate it. It doesn't keep anything square and nice. But it holds it, it holds it up. You just adjust them up to where it is before you pull your chuck away. And then in the meantime, your chuck's holding it in one place. The other chuck's got it held. You take your rollers, you run them up so that they're supporting this. Then you can move your tail stock away, pull your two, and you don't use the top um, post on the steady rest at all. It's just the bottom two, just to hold it up. Re you, uh, sometimes I even remove the jaws totally out of the chuck when I'm doing stuff like that so that you can pick it straight up. This one was such that the stub end down there was partway in the chuck, so that wouldn't have been a possibility anyway. But on larger diameter stuff that I work with, a lot of times I'll get it set up and I'll just pull the top two jaws totally out so it can come 100% straight up with the crane. So I just thought since we're working on an axle today that we should mention the make big thing is don't expect this to be in line with that one. The most important is your bearings line up. And another little bit of advice on that too, sometimes you get an axle, it's old, it's been wrecked, uh, they ruined the bearing out here, and it may not camber in the way that you think. It may actually even be bent a little bit. 
you can go to extremes, you can straighten it, you can do all that, but you're better off most of the time if it's just a minor bend. Again, line it up with the bearings and what it does on the rest of it. Uh, it was living as a bent axle before they ruined the bearing. Uh, just go ahead and fix the bearing for them. You know, you can bring it up to them if it's something that they're going to want absolutely perfect, but the most important, the bearing surfaces have to line up. Your, the axle will, if this is off of the center of the differential, which they are a lot of times. In fact, many people just repair these. <clears throat> Another way is they'll just saw them off here and just weld them in the field. Um, I don't see that as a really great fix because I guarantee you they're further off than any what was bent before, but it works. They do it. There's guys that go around the country and do that just as a whole business. You start searching for them. Uh, real common on these one-ton motor homes and one-ton dualies, they'll go around to people's yard and they'll get them out of a wrecking yard and you know one old axle that's got blown up gears you get to get two stubs off of it to go sell people repairs so uh, there there is some call for that but uh, the thing is the axle itself it is very springy it will spring in the middle allow you to be off a little bit without breaking the flange flexes a little bit um, much more than you would think i've seen some of these that when they came in and I was like, oh Lord, this needs to be straightened. The people didn't want to straighten it. I went ahead, fixed the bearings, kept on working. I'm not gonna tell you how far off it was, but <laughs> I have been amazed a few times. So don't sweat a little bit of a bend. Just make the bearings line up and the world goes around again.